So I'm here at Curbstone 15 here at Nouth. This is often referred to as the sundial stone. As you can see there are these fan, this fan of raid symbols emanating from this hole supposedly for a, a gnomon to uh, to cast shadows. Anyway, recently there's been a theory about this stone suggesting that there's a swan glyph on the stone, a swan's head and eye and beak and that in fact the stone was originally uh, the other way up, not the way it is this uh, currently. So here is the alleged swan head, the top of the head, this is upside down remember, the lower side of the beak and the eye here. So one of the difficulties with this interpretation, which becomes immediately obvious, is the fact that this feature here is a or it appears to be a natural fissure in the stone which can be traced all the way up here to the top it's a natural fissure it's a crack it is not megalithic art it is not pocked like the uh, circle and the rest of the designs and so i'm hoping i can show you this the light isn't exactly fantastic here but this is one of a series of circles around the central fan motif. So you can see some of the other ones here on the uh, northern side of the stone, on the right hand side, the circles. So this is just one of a series. There's another one here, I'm not entirely sure whether it's complete. It looks like it's mostly complete. Um, and then, while the uh, alleged head and neck of the swan comes down here along the edge of the stone, if you if you look uh, carefully, you'll see that there is nothing corresponding in terms of the uh, the foreneck apart from this natural fissure, this natural crack. So there is one further thing to be said here about this supposed swan glyph. And that is the fact that if you try to trace its foreneck, the front of its neck, again this is all upside down, uh, which is nothing but a, a natural feature crack in the stone, you'll find that if you if you follow it, it actually joins the sorry the back of the neck. So here's the, the top of the head, the beak allegedly, top of the head and the eye and the back of the head and down, running down to the neck. Well, if you trace what is allegedly the lower beak down to the underside of the neck and the front of the neck, you'll find that the front of the neck and the back of the neck join together. But that's because this is the megalithic art and this is a natural feature. When you look at the panel as a complete work, it is clear there is no swan image, and nor was this ever intended by the artist. The composition appears to represent a combination of symbols with ostensible calendrical themes. While there is no hard and fast rule relating to the interpretation of Irish megalithic art, because it is such a subjective area, and we have no means of proving or disproving the various interpretations, this one fails for several reasons. The supposed eye of the swan is one of a series of circles on the left side of the stone. Why pick just one and say it's an eye? What do the other circles represent? The bird's beak and neck are formed on one side by a natural crack in the stone, as we have discussed. Most dubious of all in relation to this claim is the fact that the stone needs to be turned upside down in order for the symbol to work. There is considerable debate about whether certain stones in megalithic art in Ireland contain representation of owls' faces. The experts would tell us that there are no anthropomorphic or zoomorphic representations in these ancient carvings, and yet occasionally a dissenting expert voice will suggest otherwise. In the case of Curbstone 15 at Nouth, one of the finest surviving works of megalithic art from the Neolithic world and one of the best known, I think we can now safely lay to rest any suggestion of a swan motif, even though it would please me greatly if that's what it really was.